Hello there. Welcome again to my YouTube channel. I'm planning to roll out a series on data structures and algorithms because you see to communicate with a computer you may use any high level language like Python, Java or C++ but they're just languages. You don't actually understand how the data is stored and manipulated behind the scenes using them alone. You need to have at least some basic working knowledge of data structures and algorithms. As the name data structure suggests, you can imagine them as simply a structure to store and manipulate data. By manipulating data, I mean you could access it, update it, delete it in different ways. So in computer programming, there could be more than one way to solve a problem. But we would want to know and then stick with the most efficient one, right? By efficiency, I mean, you know, how much time would it take to solve that problem? Or in other words, how fast is the solution? Then the second most important thing to keep in mind would be how much space your solution is taking up when it runs on your computer. Both of them are called time complexity, which is just a fancy techie word to determine how fast a solution, you know, how fast or slow your program is. And space complexity, which again is a technical term to determine how much space your program is taking. A more formal definition would be something like this. Time complexity of an algorithm quantifies the amount of time taken by an algorithm to run as a function of the length of the input. Similarly, space complexity of an algorithm quantifies the amount of space a memory taken by an algorithm to run as a function of the length of the input. Let's take a funny example that would help us understand the need for the use of data structures and algorithms and why it is a fantastic idea to learn more about them. Imagine, imagine there's a town A that is 5 kilometers away from town B and we have tasked Tommy and Grace to transfer some load of luggage from town A to town B. Tommy chooses to walk with that luggage because he was in the military while on the other hand, Grace has a car and she drives the luggage from A to B. No matter what the weight of luggage is, Grace will always take the same amount of time to transfer it from town A to town B. Because she's driving a car and the time for her to reach her destination depends on the speed of her car and not the weight of her luggage. But poor Tommy, while he can easily march his way to transfer the luggage weighing 10 kg from town A to town B, because he was in the army of course, he'll find it insanely difficult to march with say 50 kg in his back. He'll obviously take more time, way more time than if he were to carry 10 kg. So the time taken for Tommy depends on the weight or size of his luggage. Now imagine the luggage to be the data or the input upon which some action had to be performed, in this case to transfer it, and the approach of Tommy and Grace to be two different ways of performing that same task. Grace's approach was way better and efficient while we all can agree that Tommy's wasn't that efficient. For Tommy, the time taken to transfer the data increased with the size of data. This introduces us to something called order of growth or rate of growth. Order of growth is how the time of execution depends on the length of the input. In the earlier example, we can clearly see that the time of execution linearly depends on the weight of luggage or in more suitable terms, the size of data. Order of growth will help us to compute the running time with ease. So. I think this would be a perfect time to introduce to something called asymptotic notation. When we compute the time complexity, which we will represent as T of n of an algorithm, we rarely get an exact result, just an estimate. And that's fine. In computer science, 
we're typically only interested in how fast T of n is growing as a function of the, of the input size n. While it's true that machine computation time is taken for granted on a more granular scale, all work requires some time. And when the workload begins to mount, it becomes important to understand how the complexity of an algorithm influences the time it takes to complete a task. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step list of instructions used to perform an ultimate task. So a good software engineer will consider time complexity when planning their program. From the start, an engineer should consider a scenario that their program may encounter that would require the most time to complete if at all. This is known as the worst case complexity of an algorithm. Starting from here and working backwards allows the engineer to form a plan that gets the most work done in the shortest amount of time. Big O notation is the most common metric for calculating time complexity. Big O specifically describes the worst case scenario and can be used to describe the execution time required by an algorithm. The O in Big O stands for the order of growth. Since most of the algorithms deal with their worst case scenario, I'll be only discussing about Big O notation. Yeah. This notation gives the tight upper bound of the given function. You might be wondering, hey, wait a second, what on earth is function? What does it mean? Don't worry, I've represented an algorithm which we want to analyze in the form of an expression, and to that expression I'm calling a function. Yes, we can do that. Because after all, in mathematics, in a given set of x and y values, we can plot the nature of any expression using them and call it a function. So here, the function which we are interested to analyze is drawn using this yellow line. This is an algorithm which we want to analyze. Generally, it is represented as f of n equal o of g of n. That means, at larger values of n, the upper bound of f of n is g of n. If you don't understand it, don't worry, look at this way. Let's say f of n equals n to the power 4 plus 100n square plus 10n plus 5. Then n to the power 4 is our g of n. What this effectively means is g of n gives the maximum rate of growth for f of n for any value greater than a threshold value of n naught. In simpler words, whatever happens, we have to find two such constants c and n naught such that for all values of n greater than n naught, f of n will never ever be greater than g of n when we multiply g of n with c. There is absolutely no way that the time complexity of our algorithm be worse than c into g of n. That's what is written here in a mathematical way. A big O notation is defined as O of g of n equals f of n such that there exists two positive constants c and n naught such that this condition is met. f of n lies between 0 and the product of c and g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to n naught. Here n naught is the threshold value. What you're looking, you know, on your screen right now are different rates of growth in decreasing order. This means that big O of 2 to the power 2 to the power of n is worse than big O of n factorial, which is worse than big O of 2 to the power n, which is again worse than the time complexity, big O of n square, and so on. This means that the best time complexity for an algorithm is O of 1, which denotes a constant time complexity as in the case of our earlier example where Grace was taking the same amount of time to travel from town A to B, no matter what the weight of her luggage was. With that said, if an algorithm's time complexity is, let's say, bigger of n square plus 5n plus 2 log n, then its complexity would be reduced to bigger of n square. The time complexity of the term with the highest order will be considered as the overall time complexity of that algorithm. Because that algorithm can't perform worse than that, right? 
so there's no need to take smaller order terms into account to determine the time complexity. Imagine Tommy and Grace were to perform the task together. Grace takes the same amount of time to do the task, but for Tommy, the time taken would increase exponentially as we increase the weight. So, total time taken to complete the task together would be the time taken by Tommy. You don't need to take Grace's time into account because Tommy would always do worse and we don't need to waste our time by analysing her time taken. It's Tommy's time we need to analyse and maybe, maybe suggest some way to optimise it. Which is the whole purpose of analysing time and space complexity of an algorithm. So, if you've liked the video, if you understood it, if you got some intuition, why don't you consider hitting the like button and subscribe so that you don't miss any upcoming videos. Till next time, cheerio.